The Supreme Court decision on Obamacare is going to impact Christian organizations, businesses, and individuals. We'll talk about what it all means. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard along with our judicial analyst, Bruce Hausconnect. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Stuart. First, just your reaction to this decision. Well, it was a shocker for a couple of reasons. One is that the uh, health care law, the Obamacare, as most people call it now, was upheld in its entirety. And two, that uh, the 5 4 decision, which we we're expecting, kind of, uh, the fifth vote was not Justice Kennedy, as everyone thought if the if the law was going to be upheld it turned out to be justice roberts right what does that mean i mean I, here you've got the four generally liberal uh, justices on the court and one would assume the swing vote would have been justice kennedy instead it's chief justice john roberts whom nbc news after this one called the nominally conservative uh, chief justice john roberts he typically we would expect would go the other way on this yes he is he's very meticulous he's been very conservative on a lot of issues but as with most things uh, with regard to the Supreme Court, you can only guess who's going to be on what side of a case and only be so accurate. You can never quite hit it 100%, and we found that out today. Okay, let's get to the heart of this. What will the impact be on Christian organizations, nonprofits, on Christian business owners and Christian businesses, and also on individuals? How will it hit us? Right, well, <clears throat> because the law has been upheld, uh, you will see all of the same problems that we've been complaining about here at Citizen Lake now for uh, two years since the law was passed. You, you are going to see uh, uh, abortion being subsidized by federal taxpayer money through the abortion premium that goes from uh, the employee through the employer to the uh, uh, to the insurance company, you will see the HHS mandate, which uh, requires uh, employers, religious or otherwise, or most of them anyway, to subsidize, not subsidize, but to provide health care that covers uh, abortion, possible abortion inducing uh, drugs and contraceptives against their deeply held religious beliefs. Uh, you'll see an expansion of government as the government essentially takes over control of one sixth of the nation's economy. Um, you know, if you're a limited govern government type person, this is not a decision that you will uh, enjoy reading. I'm particularly thinking now in terms of Christian business owners, maybe a, own a t-shirt shop or, or maybe a bookstore or something. Uh, is there any way that they can navigate this without violating their conscience? And no, at this point, uh, by refusing uh, uh, to uh, fund these types of things with the, the abortion premiums and the, uh, the um, mandates that the employers have, uh, their only choice is to pay huge fines that would uh, just simply put them out of business. And the other impact, of course, on small businesses, there, there's a cap. Once they hit 50 employees, then anything beyond that, they would have to then provide health care for all of their employees. It's kind of a disincentive for growth. It certainly is. It will. This law will definitely put a crimp on, on business. If, if not the private insurance industry uh, in particular, it certainly will have an impact on small businesses and how they plan their growth. Now there was one aspect of this that the uh, the majority of the Supreme Court, and it was a 5-4 decision, that they decided to limit. Let's talk about that. Yes, that had to do with the Medicaid portion of the bill. There was a huge expansion of Medicaid, which provides uh, health care services to the poor. And uh, part of Obamacare expands that, puts more money into the hands of the state in order to fund more programs, more health care. Uh, one part of that law, however, had to do with the states kind of uh, bellying up to the bar, to use a rough expression, uh, to contribute millions and millions of dollars more in addition to the billions that the uh, federal government was contributing. Well, that would put a crimp on states, uh, a crimp on their budgets. It would force them to raise taxes, perhaps. And in, in general, um, the only alternative the states uh, had or thought they had was to uh, opt out of the entire Medicaid uh, program, which they have currently uh, received. They're currently receiving billions of dollars in and providing Medicaid benefits now right. to indigent people. So there was a worry. Uh, and it came, it came out during oral arguments at the Supreme Court that these states would suddenly be forced to either take the whole package um, or none of it, which, would, which is no choice at all. And this court said, look, we are not going to allow anyone to construe this uh, law um, to force states to make that terrible choice. Uh, they, they can opt out of this Medicaid expansion, but this federal government cannot then 
choose to take away all of their Medicaid benefits. Now, folks who have been following this closely know that there are many other cases that are in the pipeline that, that may end up at the Supreme Court. Any hope that one of those might knock this thing out? Uh, most of the, the pending lawsuits have to do with parts of the, uh, of the law of Obamacare, not anything designed to take it all, all out. Um, for instance, you have the, I think at, at the moment there's 23 suits uh, filed in various federal courts around the country uh, dealing with the HHS mandate requiring employers to provide contraceptive and abortion inducing drugs as part of their health care coverage. Um, that has, that, those suits which were started I think uh, in January, perhaps earlier of this year, uh, will proceed because it's a First Amendment issue. It, it really is not a challenge to the entire law. Um, there are other, other uh, lawsuits out there. We're still finding out what's in this law. So as, as people are finding out and as government agencies are interpreting this law through their regulations, you're going to see more lawsuits. Now, the other thing, right before we sat down to record this, I was watching President Obama's comments about the Supreme Court uh, upholding uh, health care on a split decision. Uh, and, and he named all the popular parts, the, uh, the your children can stay on until they're 26 and no more pre-existing conditions and no cap on insurance. All of which, I mean, it's hard to say, wow, that's a bad thing. I mean, it, it, all of those are desirable. But he never gets to the point of mentioning that the rest of this hits in 2014. That's right. Most of the benefits have been front loaded and all the costs have been back loaded and that's all going to hit and they're already projecting that uh, the cost of this is already going to be double what it was projected just a year ago. Which is of course the Affordable Care Act. Correct. <laughs> hey, thank you, Bruce. I appreciate your insights. It's very helpful to, to help us navigate and understand this. And thanks to all of you who have written to share your thoughts and encouragement. We'd like to know what you think about the Supreme Court decision. You may write us at mail at citizenlink.com. We encourage you to pray for our elected officials as they continue navigating all of this, and particularly those in the administration who regulate this, who are writing those regulations, which are impinging so much on Christian businesses and individuals. Pray that they might have a change of heart and some clarity on this. And remember, stand tall and be heard.